you an idea for a way to approach some greenery. Uh, here I'm going to actually paint a row of vines. Um, a lot of you probably know I live in the vineyard region in the south of France. Uh, and on my walk this morning, the sun was catching them and I thought, how lovely is that? And it prompted me to do a little tutorial. So here we go. What I'm going to do with this is to show you an idea. It is an idea, a suggestion of how you could approach such a thing as a group of trees or a group of bushes or, or something like that. And I'm going to start off with a big splash of green and I'm being careful to leave a few gaps because things are sometimes solid, you know, if you've got layers and layers of, um, of leaves and, and branches and twigs behind and sometimes they are not and I always think it looks so much more realistic if you can give the idea of some gaps showing through. Now don't fret about the colours I'm using because this is just as I say for a, a demonstration. I think I've got what's in my palette I like to use up what's left over. Don't like to waste anything. So there's some, I don't know, a bit of sap green, some cadmium yellow, and let's get, what we're going to do is get the bulk of the greenery, as it were. So this is vineyard, this is the green bit, the, all the leaves, and I'm going to take some, some yellow, some cadmium. Let's have the light coming from, for the sake of argument, that direction. Okay, so let's have some nice bright yellows on the top and just giving the idea of the the points of some of the leaves coming out don't get hung up on the shape this is an idea to just give you a a thought a way of doing it now this is all pretty wet let's drop some yellow in there and I want to keep it fairly fairly wet and that will become apparent later on. Now I'm going to get some um, of the trunk in just to see what we're standing on so to speak. Um, they grow them in a sort of going across so that the, the, the trunk, the stump, whatever, is often on a, an angle and then the foliage all joins up. Oops. I'm just using a bit of grey that was in my palette because they are gnarled, very old bits of wood and I'm twisting the, the brush to move the pigment around. I'm going to introduce some raw rumba. And I can fiddle about with those a bit later on. And I'm just going to put a few in the gaps. Don't worry about any bleeding going on. Okay, now what I want to do, let's just let's just ground it a bit. Just bung a bit of soil on it, I don't know. See how quickly I'm working. Don't get hung up on this. Oh, don't get hung up when we're saying that. Just do it. Just get it on the paper. Sometimes the spontaneous things you do are the best. Okay, now the idea of that is, let's just extend that a bit more. Mm. 
Okay, that's all nice and wet. What I'm going to do is I've given you the bulk of the shape, the greenery, okay? And then I'm going to go in with a darker colour. Uh, I am adding to my mixture of sap green and cad, whatever. A little bit of Payne's grey as is my want. Oops. Splashing everywhere. And the idea is I'm going to go in where it has dried off a little bit to create some shadows. So as recently we had the painting the gaps between the trees, this is going to be a similar thing. Now we're going to have shade underneath because the sun's coming across and down like that. So what we can do is we can make the shape of the leaves. Starting gradually, of course that's all a little bit too wet really, let's see if I can, getting some nice bleeds here which is gorgeous, so just starting to sort of separate some of these leaves out and I'm just looking for appropriate shapes I'm letting the paint where it's dried tell me where to place leaves in a way to go under there of course that's in shadow anyway that trunk let's bring it down here a bit Let's have a little bit of just lifting off there because that gives you some nice shapes as well. I think I've got a little bit too keen with the runny wash and that's given me now time to get in there. start to make more shapes and you can rinse your brush off and soften that out. I've gone in a little bit too dark there in my enthusiasm because really what you want to do is just gradually work a little bit darker and darker to make the leaf shapes. There's a shape for me so let's work with it. Another shape there, let's work with it. Oh, this is this is great fun. That's gone a bit a bit contrived. Let's just see if I can lift that out a bit. Don't like that mark. So can you see, already you're starting to get the idea of the shapes of the clumps of the leaves. Fabulous. So you're working a little bit backwards. It's like the trees. You're painting the shadows and not the object. And I'm not getting precious about the shape of the leaves. Um, vine leaves do come in various various forms. I think it's um, a question of the variety. They're sort of that sort of shape. So 
So they have this curve, there's like three or sometimes there's four fronds. But don't worry about that at the moment. It doesn't, this is an idea, not just the fact that I'm painting a, a row of vines, it could work for anything, any sort of tree, row of shrubs, whatever. Because it's just giving you enough, as I often say, enough information. We're not into fine detail, we're not into botanical art, we are looking for an impression. And I know how many of you want to get away from all the detail and get into something a bit more spontaneous and a bit more loose and wet. So let's come back in here now and do a bit more, I need a bit more... Uh, Dark colour there, whoops. They're funny, gnarled old things. And again we can go in. Just the odd little, that's why you leave the gaps. And of course you would have what's behind, the scenery behind. But for this exercise it's just to show you the process. I'm twisting the brush because I get some nice um, natural marks and it pushes the pigment around and if it splits the brush like that even better because sometimes the let's just take a strand off there the um the the vines themselves are so old these stumps some of them are ancient they have bits that sort of tear off and little tendrils and things okay let's go do a bit more on that quite sure I don't like that bit, just soften that out. Now the grapes are on the vines and they are at the moment the same colour as the leaves. So what I'm going to do, I'm still using this little number six I think it is, I'm finding a dry bit and I'm going in, it's quite a fine little brush, it's got a nice little point on it. Actually, no, I'm going to go in tiny, tiny, and I'll soften that out. That didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. Let's find a light a bit. There's your little grapes. No, don't like that. That's not working. That's okay. Let's turn it into another leaf. It's quite all right to change your mind as you go. Right, let's just do a little bit more and then I think we'll say that's it. Put a few curvy shapes in. And that, my creative chums, is that. Now, I don't think there's anything more to be done with that. Okay, you could go and do lots lots more. Um, we could just, let's mess about with a bit more of this. Just chunk it up a bit because it gets trodden on and tractors drive all over it. So let's just...
Oh, I'm tempted. Yeah, it's got to be done. In fact, there's your little grapes. So, there you go. That's an idea for approaching any sort of group of greenery things, trees, whatever it is. You can start with the pale colour, because remember with watercolours we're always going from light to dark, okay, not the other way around. So if you get your lightest colour down first, leaving some gaps, and then going in and painting the shadows, painting the shapes underneath. And I hope you enjoy that little tutorial, and whatever, enjoy your painting.